Well, today I'm talking about the first reading, the story of Abraham and Isaac in the land of Mount Moriah. And I got to tell you, there are few passages of Scripture that make me angry, and this is one of them. Abraham gets it into his head that he's going to show off how religious he is in front of his new neighbors. And at the same time, I think he's trying to manipulate God into owing him a big favor. And God, doing damage control, has to send out an angel to rectify the situation. Abraham is a self-centered man. God is long-suffering, loving, and gracious. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And Abraham's batting average has not been that great in the chapter or two that precede our reading for today. Abraham had been traveling along the coast of the Mediterranean, an, era, an area where there was worship of a god, Moloch. That was part of the Baal religion of the Old Testament. And it was held by a coastal people that we learned of as the Phoenicians, if we ever heard of them at all. And in the Moloch cult, there is a demand for the sacrifice of children. And Abraham meets a fellow named Abimelech, Abet from Abba, which is father, Melech for king. So uh, he meets him. And when they meet, he presents Sarah, his wife, as his sister. And so Abimelech takes her into his residence. He's going to have sex with her. And God has to intervene in the middle of the night and say, Abimelech, don't do that. This is a married woman. You'll bring abomination upon yourself. And the next morning, Abimelech confronts Abraham and says, why did you lie to me? Last week, Abraham endangered and abused his concubine Hagar and her, her, their infant son Ishmael. And again, God intervened and promised them a blessing and brought up a spring of water in the desert so that they, they wouldn't die of thirst. My assessment of today's scripture is that this is yet a third mess up by Abraham that requires divine intervention. Now the standard reading of this passage, which you have a right to know, is that Abraham shows his complete faith in God and passes the test of loyalty that God sets before him. So God not only favors Abraham, but provides a way out of sacrificing his son, Isaac. Well, in, in fear that my negative assessment of this passage might be heard as a negative assessment of Abraham's religion altogether, I consulted my commentary on the Torah published by the Union of American Hebrew Congregations. And one of the midrashes in this commentary says that Abraham misunderstood God altogether. Apparently there's a wordplay in Hebrew that makes this sensible. The midrash or the commentary goes on, a God who asks a man what the text appears to ask is not a true God, but one 
whom man fashions in his own image. Man often believes that God wants him to sacrifice his children to an imagined demand. The history of humanity is replete with misdeeds committed in the name of religion. So thank goodness I was not the first reader to take exception to this passage and its standard interpretation. So then the question is, if this is the interpretation, what is the sermon here? What, what should we draw from it? Is there anything to draw from it? Well, since the history of humanity is replete with the misdeeds committed in the name of religion, we could find examples of where Christians did awful things that we convinced ourselves that we thought God wanted us to do. Cogitating on this, I came up with the Salem Witch Trials, the nativist persecution of Germans and Irish in the early 20th century, and passing draconian laws against homosexuality. And I picked these because these were all areas where Congregationalists were prominent. There are, you know, a lot of other misdeeds, but I thought we ought to at least start with our own misdeeds first. Another would be that we could consider the nature of magic versus the nature of faith. Magic here would be that Abraham may have been testing God so that he could gain advantage. But I think the best sermon here, at least today, is that we are always more ready to sacrifice the other guy than we are to sacrifice ourselves. Consider the dynamic in this story is how Abraham is ready to sacrifice Isaac to show faith in God. Abraham is not ready to self-immolate on behalf of the family. The worshipers of Moloch threw their children into the furnace and convinced themselves that the children were on a fast track to paradise. It was only momentary. They did not jump in themselves to benefit others. You know, most of the time we prefer to be the sacrifice-er rather than be the sacrifice-e. When we hear talk, about who needs to get sacrificed for the greater good, it is seldom the speaker who sees themselves as the one in line to get sacrificed. Do we really think that K-12 students in Iowa can be safe in school all day long this fall without masks? When we talk about coronavirus deaths, do we breathe a sigh of relief? When we read that the vast majority of deaths in the Quad Cities have been of residents of senior care and nursing home, we don't live there. Do we relax a little? when we read that most of the coronavirus illness in Iowa is among foreign-born workers in meatpacking plants because that's not who we are? Might we consider making some personal sacrifice and experience some inconvenience for the benefit of others, for the benefit of the wider community? like people who have compromising health conditions or dangerous frontline work or our older neighbors who have to occupy at least some of the public space with us every now and again so they can manage their lives. Maybe we as Christians should consider the golden rule 
in light of our present circumstance, which is, as you would that others do to you, do also to them likewise. Or is our attitude, hey, to make an omelet, you got to crack some eggs. God spoke to Abraham throughout the story and ultimately saved him from himself. God spoke in the voice of the boy who said, Abba, Daddy, where's the lamb for the burnt offering? God spoke in the voice of the angel who said, do not lay your hand on that boy. It took divine intervention to save Abraham from his own egoism. Abraham's misunderstanding was born of his desire to impress others with his great devotion. Let us pray that we will hear the voices of God calling to us from young people and from our better angels. Help us attend to the needs of others and not to our selfish interests. Amen and amen.